Many people feel powerless to do anything about climate change because they think maybe it's too late. Oil and gas industries, online shopping addictions, and Caribbean vacations are pumping our atmosphere so full of CO2 that the oceans are dying, sea levels are rising, species are disappearing, and massive droughts, floods, fires, and snow apocalypses are making it really hard to plan your outfit in the morning. But is it really too late to prevent an ecological end of days? The short answer is, Almost. We're in what climate scientists and activists are referring to as decade zero, which basically means unless we make major changes today, our window for preventing environmental collapse is going to close. We're facing a crisis we've never faced before. But with crisis comes opportunity, like the chance to build a future based on living in balance with the Earth and one another. Sound too hippie for you? Well, as James Hansen, a former NASA director, once said, Either we will change our ways and build an entirely new kind of global society, or they will be changed for us. Drastic? Yes, but realistic when looking at the science. Humans have already caused the globe to warm by one degree Celsius, and we're on track to potentially exceed four degrees in as little as a hundred years. We're already seeing the effects, extreme weather, mass extinctions, food and water shortages, but four degrees hotter means goodbye civilization, hello apocalypse. As depressing as it all sounds, it's not time to Netflix and bury our heads in the sand. It's time to get our asses in gear. If we stop polluting today, and when I say stop, I mean stop burning fossil fuels, we could potentially limit warming to just over two degrees Celsius, which would go a long way in avoiding utter planetary collapse. But even then, rising sea levels could threaten 15 of the world's 20 largest cities, including New York, Miami, Tokyo, and Mumbai. The real problem is, our modern industrialized way of life depends on an abusive relationship to the Earth. Overfish, overfarm, clear cut, extract, and expand. We depend on destructive fossil fuels for things that we need, but also things that we don't. We're killing ourselves with convenience, and the planet literally can't take it. So what do we do? Multinationals and world leaders are relying on the same industries and economics that got us into this mess to try and get us out. They push carbon offsets, cap and trade, and green technology. But these so-called solutions are riddled with problems. Take carbon offsetting, for example. A company like an airline can essentially greenwash its image by planting some trees or buying some solar panels without ever significantly reducing its emissions. Plus, these so-called solutions don't actually get us off a path of consumerist, earth-plundering economics. And what's the point of solar and wind energy if they're just letting us watch The Walking Dead on our brand new iPhone 15 S's? Our very way of life needs restructuring, a transition from exploitation to preservation, which means our behavior is going to have to radically change. It sounds like a lot, I know. Luckily, some people are already on it. Communities around the world are organizing and fighting to protect their land, water, and air. Activists in Southeast Montana are working to keep billions of tons of coal in the ground. Cities and states are banning fracking, and thousands of people mobilized to successfully get President Obama to block the Keystone XL pipeline. Of course, individual action to reduce your carbon footprint, like not getting your toilet paper airmailed to your front door, helps. But it's going to take more than that. So maybe the question isn't, is it too late? But at what point does each of us step up? Is it when the oceans become an acidic soup of plastic, or when there are no more wild elephants, or tigers, or cute manatees, or when a storm wipes out your entire city? What's your limit? 